Welcome back. Once again, I'm on the road. I'm in Arkansas this week. I've been working with a large congregation, helping them deal with staffing issues. And I look forward to helping you understand the same things I'm helping them to understand. And the first thing about that is to help you understand that leaders lead somewhere. So the question is, as a leader, where are you going? Where are, you, where are you taking your church as a pastor or as the chair of a committee or whatever it is that you're doing um, in life? Leaders lead. The problem is that most leaders, as we know them, and especially the church, unfortunately, they lead by essentially maintaining the status quo. They have a title. They go in. They lead by doing what essentially has always been done. And sure, they tweak this, they tweak that, but at best, they keep things the same. And when you keep things the same, obsolescence just naturally creeps in because culture keeps marching on. And the more behind we come from our culture, the less relevant we are to those who desperately need the gospel in a language that they understand. On the other hand, those who are effective leaders have no interest whatsoever in keeping their ship tied up at the dock safely in the harbor. They want to go somewhere. They have a vision of what could be, and they want to sail out after it. But church visions, they're mostly pointless. They, by and large, are wonderfully spiritually endowed statements that say the obvious and are often, almost always, so far out of reach that no one could possibly reach them. They have the, the statements such as, the, the vision of our congregation is to reach the world from our doorstep to the farthest reaches of the world for Jesus Christ. Do you want to talk about a disempowering vision statement? Most churches can't reach the guy who lives across the street, let alone the world. A vision has a destination. A vision has an end point. A vision has something measurable. It tells you when you get there. Moses had a vision. God told Moses, hey, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go, and I'm going to take you back to the promised land. So how would Moses know when he reached the vision? Well, that's a duh. He knew he reached his vision when he got to the promised land. So what happens then? Well, Moses' vision died because visions have an end point. So there needed to be another vision. And what was that vision? To take the land to move into the promised land and to conquer the land and to settle it. And so they did, and Joshua led that. Once they'd done that, though, that vision died. And so comes the next vision. That is to become one united nation, a nation of Israel. And David led them there. And once he'd done that, what was the vision? Well, it sort of all fell apart at that point. Solomon's son and all that. But you can see that the vision moved on. Visions change. The mission of the church doesn't change, but your vision changes, or church's vision changes. Often changing when the leader has achieved the vision and hands the reins over to someone else to achieve the next vision. But the same leader can reach vision after vision after vision if they achieve the vision rapidly enough. One of the difficulties that many church leaders find is that they're processual, and they have this sense that the journey is just as important as the destination. The problem is, is if you don't work towards a specific measurable destination and you focus on the journey, you end up wandering around because you don't really have a purpose that's really driving you forward. Your eyes, if you will, are down on the ground as you take one step at a time instead of looking out forward into where you're going.
into where God is leading you. When you take your eye off the prize, you end up going off in a different direction. So a leader who is going to lead and has a vision to lead to is miles ahead of everybody else. But the question is, how do you come up with a vision? Well, first, you know, when, when I work with congregations, if the pastor has no vision whatsoever for the congregation, I often will tell them it's time to go on a spiritual retreat. It's time to take a yellow tablet or a white tablet, whatever, a, a tablet. Um, it's time to take a pen. It's time to take your Bible. And it's time to head out to the hills or to the convent or to a monastery or to a retreat center or wherever you can go where you can be alone with just you and God and paper, not electronics, paper and pen or electronics if you're going to turn off your games, turn off your um, uh, the internet access, however you want to do it, but the, it's, it's just you and God, no other contact. And you go and you say, God... I'm not leaving here until you've given me a vision for where you want me to lead this church. And then stay there. Two days, three days, whatever it takes. For me, it never took more than a couple days. Uh, I, it, took, it took 24 hours for me to get used to being by myself with just God. And then there was a day or two in which we'd had conversations. And, oh, that's where you want me to go. And it became clear. And I always bounced it off some of my uh, inner circle people is, you know, this is what I'm hearing God say. This is what I'm hearing God calling us. And when it was affirmed, then we went forward. But what is it we're affirmed? What is it, what, what does a, a measurable destination look like? Well, generally I use what's called a smart goal or a smart vision. If you've been in business very long, you know what that is. But for the rest of us, the smart goal or a smart vision means that the vision, the end goal has the five parts of SMART. It is specific. It tells you exactly what you're going to do. I am going to grow my church. I'm going to grow uh, my members. I'm going to whatever. It's specific. It's measurable. I'm going to be able to tell whether I do it or not. Often we do a set a goal of we're going to have our, a more mature congregation. Well, how do you measure that? And you can, but you better have the matrices that you've developed so you can find out whether they're growing. And there's a blog post on that on the EffectiveChurch.com website if you want to go find that. So it's specific. It's measurable. It's also achievable. It's something that you can do or that you and your congregation can do. It's something that if you may not have all the resources, but you can get the resources. We're not talking about a small goal that you can reach on your own. We're talking because that's not that won't be a God vision. A God's vision is always bigger than you. But an achievable goal means you don't have to depend on something happening in the government or something to happen across the street. You know, if the if the county buys the land from us for the expansion, then we can. That's not a that's not a, an achievable vision because you have to wait on someone else to get there. It has to depend on you. The third, after achievable, so specific, measurable, achievable, and it has to be responsible. It has to be a vision that you can take responsibility for, but it also has to be a vision that is something that, you're, that is responsible for your congregation. It's responsible as a community of faith. And some visions aren't responsible. Remember, the mission of the church is to make disciples. If you have a vision that is all about doing social justice ministries or or relieving suffering, and it doesn't bring people to Jesus Christ, then it's an irresponsible vision for the church because the church has a specific mission. And finally, it's time-bound. It's time-sensitive. In five years, in three years, in two years, next week, I met a guy this week um, at this consultation here in Arkansas, and he told me that by the end of next year, he wanted to have 21 students in his fifth grade class. He has five right now. He has a specific, measurable, and time-sensitive goal. Your goals need to be time-sensitive. It needs to be specific, measurable, achievable, responsible, and you need a time set for it. Once you have that, 
then a, then you can cast that vision. You can share that vision. Put put um, faces to that vision. Talk about what the church will look like when that vision is achieved. Sell it, if you will. Get people on board. Look for people whose eyes light up. Then recruit them for your ship. Cast off the lines and sail off into the future. Because leading with purpose and vision is the most responsible and the most faithful thing you can do as a church leader. We'll see you next week.